Welcome back. This is lesson three of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session 10. And in this lesson, we will take the Jupyter Notebook we prepared in the previous lesson, and we will turn this into a Flask application. This is the notebook we have. We use this notebook to communicate to our model deployed with TensorFlow Serving. We use this notebook to get an image of pens, reprocess it, turn it into protobuf, and then send it to TensorFlow Serving, get responses, post-process them, and turn this into something human readable. So now what we want to do is we want to turn this into a Flask application. Before actually doing that, let me stop Jupyter. I don't need it anymore. And before turning this into a Flask application, I want to turn it into just a Python script. I'll use Jupyter MV convert for converting this to a Python script. Then it will be to Ruby script. TensorFlow Serving Connect. This should be MV convert. Now we should have it. Let me open it. This is the code. Let me rename it. I'll call it gateway because this is how we will call our service. Let me do a bit of cleaning here. So I don't need all that. So we will start with output. Put the import here. So this is another function that we need. So what I'll do here is this bunch of code. So what I'll do is I'll call it prepare request. And then this request will get the X and it will turn this X into this PB request. We have a function like that. And then let's have another function called make predictions, which takes a URL takes this one. Let me comment this URL. Uh, maybe we just predict. So it takes the URL, turns the URL into X. Then, then we will call this prepare request, SPB request X. And then we do the prediction here. And then let me have another function that we will call prepare response maybe. And then it will get this PB response. And it will do this thing. So it will extract the float values from there and it will do this thing. It will combine it with the classes. And as for the classes, let them put in front of this function. Just here. And clean this thing. Yeah, so we have this predict method. And yeah, let's just write the main statement. It's name equals main. Then URL will be this one. Commented. Then we invoke. I forgot to do this prepare response. Response PB response. And then we return response. And then predict URL here response. And we will just print it. Clean response. So we turn this notebook into a script. Let us now execute the script. Gateway. Yeah. So we executed the script and we get the response with pens and the rest of the things. So it works. Now what we want to do is we want to turn this script into a Flask application. Let, let me go to our fifth session and open the code for the fifth session. And there we have this predict.py. And I'll just copy these things here. This is our things we need for Flask. Connect it here. Okay, and we need this route here. Oh, this thing as well, the app. I'll call this app, let me call it gateway. And then we already have predict function. So I'll call it predict endpoint. So here we expect that the predictions will be sent in JSON. So data will be request get JSON. Then the data will contain URL, data URL, and then we'll have result, which we'll get from this predict function. And we'll just want to return result, but we will also JSONify it. Now let me comment this one. And actually what we need to do is this thing. So we want to run this up now. Okay, so I hope I didn't make any mistakes here. Let's run it. Python gateway, because I don't have Flask. Yeah, let me just install it. 
Uh, actually, I should have created the pipen file, but yeah, anyways, let me just install Flask this way. Right. Okay, and like before, I want to create a test file, test.py. For this test.py, I'll copy it from the previous session. So we have code here and we have test.py. So what I actually want to do is just copy the entire thing and replace the URL with HTTP local host 9696 slash predict. So let me run it. That was fast. It didn't complain about anything. Ah, yeah. So the first time it ran, it complained about other stuff, but only for the first time. Um, the subsequent runs, they are much faster. So now we have a Flask application that we can use. And if you remember, so we actually have two things. So here we have our Docker container with TensorFlow serving. And then we have our Flask application with the gateway service. We send a request to the gateway. Gateway prepares the request and sends it to TensorFlow serving. And TensorFlow serving applies the model, sends back the predictions to the gateway, and gateway post processes the predictions and sends them to us. So this is what we want to actually cover here. We wanted to convert the notebook into a Python script. We wanted to wrap it into Flask app. Actually, I wanted to add one more thing. I want to put it into pipenv now, because this is something that we will need next when we are preparing the images to make them into pipenv. So let's do that quickly. Let's stop it here. For pipenv, we will need to install a bunch of things. pipenv install so grpc io 1.42.0. Then we also need Flask to Keras image helper and G unicorn because in Docker we will later use the unicorn for serving this. So let me install that. I'm not installing TensorFlow here and TensorFlow serving. So I need to install pipenv. Pip install pipenv. I'm not installing TensorFlow and TensorFlow is serving here. Remember in this code, we have a problem. We have this problem, which is quite huge. You remember we spent quite a lot of time talking last week why we don't want to import TensorFlow in our code. Here we have the same problem. And actually, yeah, we just need this function. We just need this make tensor proto, just one function. And for that, we are dragging the entire TensorFlow library with us, which is 1.7 gigabytes. There is a lighter weight version of TensorFlow called TensorFlow CPU. It's smaller than just TensorFlow, but it's still it's like 400 megabytes or something like this, quite huge. And what we need to have is only this tensor proto. So this is a thing that converts our NumPy array into protobuf format, getting the entire library for that is too much. We have a solution for this problem as well. I extracted all the protobuf files. So this TensorFlow protobuf. So I wrote a script that extracts all the protobuf files and puts them separately. It still uses this TensorFlow package, but it only keeps the protobuf files we need. We can actually install it. So yeah, there is a bit of a description what's going on, like why we want to have that. Yeah, it becomes a little bit more verbose. So we will need to turn this code. We will need to turn it into this code. It's a little bit more code, but without the, the TensorFlow library. So let me install it. So you can install this. I'm doing this instead of installing TensorFlow or TensorFlow CPU and TensorFlow serving API. So this is what I'm doing instead of that. This TensorFlow protobuf contains the protobuf files for both TensorFlow and TensorFlow serving. So let me run this as well. And while it's installing, I will need to copy this code. I'll create a new file. I'll call it proto.py and I will put the code there because it's just too much code to put in our gateway.py. So we have from TensorFlow core framework, this TensorFlow here, it can be the full TensorFlow, which is 1.7 gigabytes, or it can be the light version, this version that we just installed, because this TensorFlow protobuf contains only protobuf files. So it contains only this, this, and this. And in this package, we need this NP to protobuf. And then in this gateway, what I'll do is I'll do from Proto import this and pit protobuf, and then I'll remove this thing. 
So now I'll just simply import this from the script and it's doing exactly the same thing as before. And for the rest, I don't think we need to change anything to check that everything works. I'll, I will not run it as a Flask application to just make it simpler and faster. I will only send a request to our TensorFlow serving to check that everything works. So let me do pip and shell. So now if I check which Python, yeah, I have this virtual environment. I don't know why it looks so weird. So now let me run this gateway. It works, doesn't require TensorFlow. You see, we don't have these logs with these warnings saying that, hey, there are some problems with CUDA and so on, because we don't load the entire TensorFlow here. We only load the parts of the code we need and nothing else. Okay, that's actually it. We put all the dependencies in the virtual environment. We get rid of the TensorFlow dependency. If you're interested in knowing how actually how this actually works, there's this TensorFlow serving proto.sh. This is a script that shows how exactly you can do this yourself, like how you can compile all these protobuf files into Python code and just use them without the whole TensorFlow library. Okay, let me uncomment this. Yeah, and that's all I wanted to cover in this lesson. So now we have TensorFlow serving running in a Docker container. We have a Flask application and we put everything into pipenv. So we have a virtual environment now. So now what we want to do is package this preprocessing service, gateway service into Docker and then run these things together. And for that, we will use Docker Compose. This is something we will do in the next lesson. So see you soon.